All right, guys, so the first knot I'm going to go over is the bowline or bowline, however you want to say it. And most people teach it via the uh, rabbit and the tree method, all right? So I'll show you that first. First, make yourself a hole for the rabbit. Go up the hole with the rabbit around the tree and then back down the hole, okay? And that's your bowline, and that's what the knot looks like. Then there's a couple things nice about a bowline. One, it's pretty easy to tie uh, once you figure it out. And then secondly, because it works off of this main bite, you can put a lot of tension on it and you can usually still get it, uh, it undone pretty quickly and easily by just working that bite down the rope and then pushing that in through, okay? The other thing that not, that's nice about it, if you have a situation where you need a set diameter loop, okay? Set diameter loop, the bowline is perfect for that, all right? So that's, uh, that's the bowline. So the one variation that I've seen of the bowline is some guys will lock the tail under this bar, okay? That bar right there. So they'll work their tail like this, okay? They'll snug it up and you end up with a knot that looks like that, okay? And that, that's also safe and that's just a way to lock it. Usually people are doing that because they just wanna change the direction of the tail for whatever utility reason they're using the knot for. I'm gonna show you one other way that I like to do the bowline that's put the bowline between your fingers like this Go to this here, turn, okay, and then around. Okay, and you can do it almost with one, one hand, okay? Get your tail through the loop there, and then boom. There's your one-handed bowling, okay? That's just a little bit quicker way to uh, tie it, and it takes a little practice, but uh, it's handy, all right? All right, so now I'll show you the clove hitch, all right? You can go around the object like that, create an X on the object, okay? And then on your second wrap, go under your line like this, okay? And that's the clove hitch, all right? The nice thing about the clove hitch is it's adjustable without untying it. So if I want more rope on this tail, I can just feed it through, okay? And then I can pull it through. So it adjusts that way. The other thing that's nice is when it's tight, the two ropes are independent of, of each other, right? So I could be holding anchor on this side and then use this side of the rope for something else, okay? So, and that's a nice, a nice situation in a lot of, in a lot of situations in the mountains, mountains, all right? So that's a clove hitch. All right, guys, so now I'm gonna talk about a couple ways to combine ropes, all right? So here's two ends. For equal, equal uh, diameter ropes, this is a handy way to do it. It's called a fisherman's knot. Basically take one end of the rope, do an overhand knot, make sure the tail's going up the other, the other rope, okay? Then take your other tail, do the same thing on that side, okay? So if you got two knots there, and then snug them up. That's your fisherman's knot, okay? Nice, pretty knot, okay? And the other thing about it is, you know, when it releases tension, it, it'll stay there uh, generally, all right? As long as you got long enough tail, so it's handy that way. Another variation of that is the double fisherman's knot. And it's the same idea, one tail over, but instead of just a simple overhand knot, we're gonna go over again, and then here we're gonna go under that X, okay? Kind of a barrel knot is what I call that. On my other tail, same thing, okay? Under the X, okay? And then same deal, okay, double fisherman's knot. So that's handy, particularly for equally, equal diameter ropes, you'll find that handy. The next one I'll show you is the, uh, the sheet band. And the sheet ba band is, is very commonly used when you have two ropes that are different diameter, all right? It's a safe knot to use in those circumstances. All right, so first make a band on one, one end of your, or one of your ropes, go up through it, go around, okay? And then here, this line, go back underneath that, okay? And that's the sheet band, all right? The nice thing about the sheet band is it works perfectly on ropes of different diameter. The other thing is a pretty flat knot, as you can see, but you have to watch it whenever it, whenever it come, whenever it's out of load, it can come loose, okay? Particularly if your tail's short there, your tail can work out, all right? So you gotta be careful of that. 
but it's got its, its uses for sure. It's a very, very common, common knot. The other way to tie two ropes together or end, end of the loops or end of, end of one rope to make a loop, and all these apply to that, obviously it's doing the same thing, is you can do an overhand bend, all right? So take the two ends, okay? Make sure you got plenty of tail. Just make a clean overhand knot, okay? And then dress your knot so it looks nice and doesn't have kinks on it, okay? All right, and so there you go, okay? People actually think it, it doesn't look as clean as the other knots, but particularly in like a climbing environment, it actually lays flatter because it tends to rotate like that, okay? So it's less likely to get caught in things than you'd think. It's actually one of the best, best knots for that, all right? And then you can, you can obviously just put another one in there as a safety, safety knot if you feel the need to do so, okay? All right, guys, so the next couple knots are what I call tensioner knots. And you would use these, you know, maybe if you're hanging quarters in a tree or if you need to, to snug up, you know, the, uh, your, your lines on your tent or something like that, okay? So the simplest one is just a variation of what I call the trucker's hitch. What I do is so I've got one end tied off, okay, so that's on the tent or it's up in a tree or it's over a tree limb or something like that, okay, but it's tied off probably with a bowline. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to make a, a loop that I can tension to. I just use a nice little overhand loop, but you can also use a figure eight. Okay, all right. And then I'm gonna take the other end, wrap around you know, my stake or you know, another tree or whatever if I'm lifting quarters, and then I'm gonna take that end, and what I do is I actually leave it bent so I don't have to go to the very end of my rope, and then I go through that overhand knot, and then I can pull tension, okay? pull tension, get it really tight, and then I can pinch right here, go over, keep that pinch, okay, snug it up like that, okay, and then I take the tail of my rope and do a couple half hitches on that, okay, so that's pulled tension, and it's really easy to adjust, right, just pull those half hitches off, okay, pull my little slip knot out, loosen it, or just get back on it and snug it back up, okay? And then retension it from there, all right? All right, guys, so the last one I'm gonna show you, and this is very handy for, for tightening up tent stakes. You put the knot in, and then you don't have to take it out ever. You can just, you can basically create tension by sliding it up. It kind of works like a prussic does, all right? Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is this, this end here is tied to your tent, let's say in this example. We're gonna go over it, okay? And then we're gonna go back through this loop. Okay, so you can see that. One wrap, two wraps. I find that three wraps is perfect. You know, more obviously is gonna create more friction, more holding power, okay? But it'll also, these will end up rolling on each other too if you get too many wraps in there. So three wraps, then go over that side, around, the uh, tied off end of your rope, okay? And then take your end and go through here. Okay, and so you'll see create, it creates a nice clean bite across the front. And then basically now you've got a tensioner knot, okay? Works just like a prussic. You can loosen it this way and then you can, you can tighten it just by pulling it up like that, all right? It's a very handy camp knot.